My name is Alex William Smith by birth. These days I'm better known as Jonathan Ryle Hypnotist. I was formerly known as magician Alex Leroy. In 1998 I set out to expose the dishonest uh, activities of Baza Mahmood. Unfortunately this backfired landing me in prison as explained at circusofthemind.net. I became very much a victim of Maza Mahmood the fake sheikh and in the past couple of years um, it's come to light the proof and evidence that he hacked my phone, used unlawful information gathering and that he drugged my drinks as well as what I already knew that he manipulated and intimidated behind the scenes through his associates and basically outright lied. What follows, there are some clips from either episode one or episode two or episode three of Amazon Prime's uh, documentary which released on the 26th of September 2023 called The Fake Shake. These clips are used under fair usage, copyright exemption and the fact that I'm giving a critical review of the content. So this is my incredibly short review of Amazon Prime Video's new three-part documentary, The Fake Shake, about Rupert Murdoch's disgraced journalist, Maza Mahmood, formerly of the News of the World. Uh, the three-part documentary dropped on the 26th of September, 2023. First thing I noticed is that on the image that shows up when you search for it on Amazon, look, that is... Me, Alex William Smith by birth, better known as Jonathan Ryle, outside the Old Bailey, watching the mood arrive for his trial. Yes, indeed. That's my head. But you do actually get to see me moving on episode three. And at the start of episode one, two and three, I'm in the opening credits, as you'll see. First important point, this series includes dramatic reconstruction based on witness accounts. Some events and characters have been modified or combined. This is a three-part series and each episode's content should be viewed and understood in the context of the entire series. After all, you had to make that one last phone call. When I arrived back at my flat, I saw that my answering machine had the blinking light on, which told me I had a message. And it was somebody from the News of the World. It wasn't an easy phone call for either party. And 99% of the time, they either slammed the phone down or declined to comment. I just wish that they'd made that phone call to me. That's right. I'm categorically stating that Maza Mahmood did not call me. None of his associates did. Nobody rang me from the News of the World the day before the article appeared to say you're going to be in the News of the World tomorrow. I can only assume that's because as laid out by the evidence at CircusOfTheMind.net that they knew that I knew who Maza Mahmood was and that they didn't bother ringing me because it was pointless them ringing me because they knew they would never publish any comment I made anyway, because my comment would have been, you used intimidation behind the scenes. No doubt what you're going to print will contain lies like it has done before. I could only ever have got the alleged fake coins if you'd uh, provided the money up front, as you did. And the only way I was able to do it is because one of your associates, paid by you, told me where to get them from. You, you were all elements of the supply chain and you made this happen. And I set out to expose this. So I'll be going to another paper with my recordings. Little did I know that um, well, things would backfire. They'd make lies and they'd try and portray me as some kind of drug dealing, Uzi gun salesman, none of which I ever got done for, incidentally. It's all explained at circusofthemind.net. But here's the thing. They never, ever, ever rang me. And also, in the year 2000, when the Sunday Times and the News of the World did an article about the release of my autobiography, the link's above or below this video, by the way, for information that backs this up, um, they never mentioned the 1998 sting on me or the fact that I was imprisoned in 1999. Probably because they did not want to draw attention to the fact that the judge 
in Manchester Crown Court acknowledged it was not an ordinary case, that it was done for publicity and that I knew who Mahmood was. Now follows the opening credits from all three episodes and uh, look out, look out for Royal's Head. The trial of Mazar Mahmood, the journalist known as the fake Sheikh, has opened at the Old Bailey. It was so unbelievable, it was believable, you know, this can't be fake. For 30 years, he has reveled in hiding his identity. His anonymity, his secrecy, was the key to his entire act. The self-styled king of the sting, turning up to court every day beneath a balaclava. I think he was ruthless. We'll jump to episode three for a moment. Um... Precisely 41 minutes and 6 seconds in for this. I went to the Old Bailey to watch. I remember him arriving to court. A couple of big blokes on either side of him. Yes, my head. I'm faced. With his little navy blue anorak and his hood down over his head. So the short review conclusion is, it's an entertaining three-part documentary. The key words, entertaining. Um, there is more, if you like, hard-hitting journalistic expose of Mahmood's dishonesty and illegal techniques in the 2014 BBC Panorama documentary, The Fake Shake Exposed, that you can find on circusofthemind.net. And also on circusofthemind.net is the stuff, the evidence of his long-term use of phone hacking and other unlawful information gathering that's come to light in the past couple of years, together with the fact that for years there is evidence to show that it's highly likely that he drugged many of his victims' drinks. And there's the evidence there that the Police and Crown Prosecution Service knew back in 1994 that Mamou could not and should not be considered a witness of truth any further, and yet continued to listen to his lies, despite the fact that they knew they shouldn't. And they never disclosed this to any post-1994 fake shake victims, thus failing in their disclosure duties. Further, in 1999, Roderick Giggs's case collapsed because the prosecution could no longer rely on the mood recorded evidence. These are all things that are not mentioned in the three-part documentary. You'd have thought they'd got Steve Grayson to talk about that. They knew because they'd seen Circus of the Mind.net. I met with Voltage Films who made the documentary and they spoke with Steve Grayson. Steve Grayson who gave me a sworn statement as part of my appeal that's gone to the Royal Courts of Justice and the Criminal Cases Review Commission and is about to go back there in 2025 um, when my uh, privacy case against Newsgroup newspaper is concluded. So bottom line, entertaining three-part series, some information definitely shows the fact that he was dishonest and all that mattered to him was the story, but they do not even scrape the surface and it kind of makes out it only happened in the last few years of his career that it escalated over time. Um, and yet that's not the case because as I say, the police and CPS knew in 1994 he could not and should not be trusted.